Misinformation, disinformation, it's seemingly everywhere. For all of us and for journalists, getting to what is real can be pretty challenging. Joining us from gigafact.org is co-founder Chandran Shankaran. Great to meet you, Chandran. Nice to meet you, Fred. Well, let's start with an overview of what Gigafact is and how this came about. Yeah, uh, the majority of Americans, especially young Americans, get their news these days and information about what's happening in the world through social media. And uh, social media, as uh, we've all come to learn, is ground zero in the misinformation, disinformation problem. And what Gigafact uh, does is that we are a nonprofit platform. We seek out uh, highly qualified regional news organizations and we enable them to start getting facts in circulation on social media to help uh, support uh, untethered conversations and really well-researched facts and to get them into circulation. Uh, we have uh, a presence now in five states uh, across the U.S., and our goal is to have uh, a presence in 20 states uh, in the U.S. by the time the election rolls around at the end of the year. Well, your background that led you to this, tell us about it. Yeah, so I, I am uh, a tech entrepreneur by, uh, by background for the last couple of decades based in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, having built a couple of companies in uh, what I would call kind of large corporate uh, software and productivity uh, improvements. And uh, in 2017, after this sale of my last company, I did a hard pivot to face uh, uh, a problem that was uh, bothering me deeply. Uh, and I had the opportunity to, to, uh, to try to do something about it. And so 2017, I, I faced this kind of what we call the global disinformation uh, uh, problem with the global information disorder problem um, and uh, uh, initiated a couple of tech forward uh, solutions that uh, that start making a dent in this problem and Gigafact really came out of that. Um, we, uh, we researched and looked at the work of uh, f the first generation of fact checking organizations like PolitiFact and others and saw that those fact checks that they were putting in circulation on social media, research started discovering that it had was starting to have a meaningful impact on the virality of false claims. And we thought, what if we could uh, create a platform uh, that allowed thousands of highly credible voices to, to start the, the fact checking journey and get uh, flood the zone with uh, really well-crafted smart interceptions. And if we really scaled it up, could we could we make a much bigger dent on the problem, and that's really what initiated uh, uh, Gigafact. Well, when we look at social media today, it it, it does seem still uh, like a, a free for all. I guess is one way to put it. Um, how do you go about countering the impact of all that? Yeah. Uh, so social media is, in fact, uh, a, a kind of a free-for-all zone, and that's a really good way to describe it. Uh, there are two ways to attack the problem, and we are kind of taking one way with uh, Gigafact, and we should talk about the other way as well. Uh, to begin with, uh, we live in a time where uh, while there is large amounts of misinformation and disinformation and kind of lack of trusted sources uh, circulating, we also live in a time when it's never been easier to find really great, credible information to support these answers if you're willing to take the time to look for it, right? We, we, have, uh, we have lots and lots of really great, credible sources. So, so one way to attack the problem, which is the way that Gigafact uh, takes, is, is really, uh, can we amplify the scope and scale of really trusted, what we call clean information kitchens on social media and give them a much bigger voice, uh, which is what Gigafact is seeking to do in a kind of an, an AP style model. We sign up these newsrooms, 
we once they publish a response to a fact, we, we get that in circulation through various distribution strategies to allow these facts to be encountered by consumers in their moment of need. And so, so that's kind of the front door approach to this, which is really get more facts in circulation from highly credible sources and do it in a digitally smart way that, that, uh, that competes with these claims. The other way to do it is uh, is not really in the scope of GigaFact, but which has to do with regulatory reform and how do you start introducing into social media platforms uh, features and capabilities that that uh, that uh, biases by that uh, that really weighs towards. Uh, credible information as opposed to just popular information. And we can get dig deeper into that because I, I've done at, at a personal level some amount of research on, on the state of uh, regulation in the in this space. But uh, from a gigafact standpoint, we've got to kind of work with the with the the uh, the field the way it's set. And uh, our goal is to really flood the zone with facts. That sounds like a, a noble cause, of course. You know, I, I worked as a journalist at a time when uh, there were airwaves that were regulated, that there were broadcasters were more or less forced to provide equal time, both sides, and uh, newspapers ran editorials, and there were letter, letters to the editor to counter those, and there seemed to be a lot of balance. Uh, all of that, for the most part, is shattered today um and the divisiveness and on on the airwaves mirrors what you see in your neighborhoods i suppose today I don't, i'm not sure which came first chicken or the egg there but it's there how how do we go about you know i talk to people and they, they say this can't i don't know how we can possibly fix this we're not getting our news from the same sources and how do we go about deciding what the facts are, what is real, what isn't. Yeah, Fred, so uh, let, let me give you my worldview of, I think, how we got to where we, we've gotten, because your description of the problem is, is uh, it, it resonates a lot, right? It used to be that, that uh, uh, we had, we had, you know, an anchor on, 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 on TV that, uh, you know, on a small number of stations or the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times or wh whatever you looked at that subject themselves to a certain amount of self-discipline and restraint of the sort that you described in the production of quality information separated the, the opinions from, the, from news in ways that were, was a little bit easier to, easier to get. Uh, it used to be that when we, you know, walked down the grocery store aisle, if we saw a, a tabloid that talked about a Martian baby having been born, uh, in the, we knew to distrust it, right? Or we, when we saw the person on the street corner holding up a sign saying the end of the world is upon us, we knew to, to even if the information might actually be factually correct, we knew to distrust, distrust that source as a credible information source. And we had kind of simple signals, right? And in the world we live in today, those simple credibility signals have been lost. Those information shortcuts about who can be trusted, can a, can a high quality video production by a someone who's gotten a degree from a good university, is that enough to trust that information? And it turns out that it's not enough to trust that information. So those old credibility signals are gone and the new credibility signals have not yet taken their place. So I really think the project over the next five years on the part of Gigafat and several others like us is to rebuild a, what I would call a supply chain of credibility signals that allows consumers rapidly to discern uh, what uh, trustable content looks like in the modern era, what came from a clean kitchen, uh, what were the original uh, sources uh, and how is it being delivered and the channels by which it's being delivered to me. So I do think there's kind of an entirely new system of credibility signals that need to be uh, established in order to solve the problem. And there are several ways to kind of go about this and we can talk, dig into it a bit more, but, but that's my kind of fundamental framing of the problem is is um, uh, it's not that people have become fundamentally more dishonest, in my opinion. It is that it is that in a free for all setting uh, that has now been created through these social media platforms and the digital platforms that everyone has access to, 
uh, people are exploiting it and taking advantage of it. And we need to kind of return it to a regime of some order. And I think it's possible to do. It's going to take some doing. And the financial incentives are to generate as many clicks as possible and have you scroll down and scroll down and scroll down more and maybe you'll get a story and maybe you won't. Right, right, exactly. And and so there's kind of a default setting on social media platforms and the, these digital platforms that started with a view that says all content will be free. It will be funded by advertising and uh, advertising biases uh, towards content that has the most amount of readership, right? Regardless of whether it's true or not. And I think there's kind of the incentive structure is around popularity and circulation of these uh, of, of these posts, uh, but it's not hard to change. So, so uh, there have been a couple of experiments that says, if you could slow down the ability for someone to like a post on social media, by five seconds or 10 seconds, the virality of that post will drop dramatically, okay? So small changes, the addition of good friction into these social platforms. If you had the ability, every time you looked at a post, if you're about to forward it to 20 people, if, if a pop-up came up that said, uh, are you sure you'd like to forward it? Have you verified this? This is, seems to be on sensitive, in a sensitive zone. Uh, the virality of that will drop by 80 percent, right? In, so in terms of, and there have been real experiments that have been conducted around this. So, so we're not far from a regulated environment. It's just really hard to do when the incentive structures, as you mentioned, are so misaligned. Your thoughts about AI? Obviously, it can be used to generate some terrible things of fake stuff. But on the other hand, can AI be used to help solve all of this? Yes. So so let's let's deal with the bad side first and then we'll come to the good side. So the, so the bad side uh, of AI in this misinformation landscape is that it's possible to create synthetic images that look like real images, synthetic videos that look like real videos and synthetic content that look like real articles um, and all all in an instant. Right. And and that's just going to kind of increase the ma and magnify the the flow of misinformation online and the confusion in the state of uh, of uh, disarray that people find themselves in uh, about this. The ways it can help is number one, um, the same AI uh, techniques can be used to, to point towards a rapid identification of synthetic content, rapid patterns of where this information came from uh, that could signal that it's highly likely to be synthetic content. It could be deployed against um, um, uh, uh, it, you know, patterns of, of, of behavior that, that uh, cause you know, information to, to be either more trustable or less trustable. But one of the useful things that we're doing, for instance, at GigaFact is that we are creating a fact brief writing assistant for all the newsrooms that join GigaFact that says, uh, anytime you encounter a claim, you can give it to this AI assistant who will do the first draft of a adjudication and research on the claim and you, the human editor in the newsroom can quality check it and bring it across the finish line. So really uh, harnessing AI to allow this, this fact introduction process to scale at a much more uh, rapid rate than, than humans could entirely on their own. So there's, I, there's, it's definitely uh, on, on, on both sides of the equation. And uh, another huge issue, obviously, is has to do with local news, and uh, its disappearance. I suppose is one one way to put it. And uh, public attitudes towards journalists divided, of course. Yes. So let's 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 talk about local news first. So we are huge fans of local news, and our strategy at GigaFact is to go to uh, terrific, incredibly qualified local newsrooms. Uh, that meet our standards for transparency and nonpartisanship and sign them up to do the GigaFact fact-checking work. And in fact, we have a presence in, in, in uh, newsrooms now in Oklahoma, Wisconsin, uh, Nevada, uh, Texas, uh, Minnesota, that, that are local, regional, nonprofit newsrooms 
And, and the amazing thing is that when they start doing this kind of work with GigaFat, their uh, circulation and the audience engagement numbers go up quite significantly. A recent post by uh, Fort Worth Report, which is one of our local newsrooms uh, operating in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, when they publish a fact brief on GigaFact, uh, and it had to do with a claim that was circulating on, on social media about whether Chinese companies own Dallas tollways and highways. And they published a fact brief that said, no, there is no Chinese ownership in any of those roadways. Uh, and that, that has been an incredibly virally successful uh, response by them as an example. So, so we are really signing up local newsrooms across the country and hopefully across the world um, uh, into the GigaFact mission. Local news, it turns out, in a couple of these research studies um, is more trusted by the community than national corporate uh, uh, news is. And, uh, and there are a couple of surveys that show that. So we think that the right way to build GigaFact and GigaFact's trust model is to attract really strong local newsrooms that are well trusted in their communities and really build a quilt, build a quilt of this capability across uh, across the country here over the next uh, several months. Are you looking to provide, I don't know, something like a good house, housekeeping seal of approval here on, on certain newsrooms? Well, I would say informally, right? So, so, so we certainly have a set of criteria by in terms of how we admit newsrooms into the GigaFact network, and it has to do in part with the degree of self-imposed transparency and ethics that they apply on themselves, but also being part of uh, the Society for Professional Journalists and being part of the Institute for Nonprofit News, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, but as well, we help apply uh, some rating services that have now come to be in the last two or three years. So there's a rating service called All Sides that does bias ratings of news sites, another one called Media Bias Fact Check. And we, we uh, both apply those ratings uh, onto these newsrooms. We ask newsrooms to self critically uh, apply these ratings on themselves. And so it's really seeking high degrees of kind of transparency in what I would call open, clean kitchens, right? In the entry to GigaFact. And in so doing, what we want is when someone encounters a GigaFact fact brief in circulation from a GigaFact newsroom, that there's a trust portion that kind of comes with it. And, and uh, I liken this a bit, uh, Fred, to in the early days of Wikipedia, we kind of didn't really trust it as a meaningful source. And we kind of had kind of cautionary stories to ourselves. But now over time, uh, in the mainstream, in the main, when you encounter a wiki search result at the top level of a Google search, uh, you know that for 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 anodyne questions or you know normal questions, it's a it's a it's a pretty good resource and it's and and it works and it works pretty well and I think the goal is to kind of gain this 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 uh, kind of inherited trust through the work of hundreds and thousands of these fact briefs and and consumers encountering it so that they start viewing GigaFact as a trusted seal of approval without us needing to be the adjudicators of it. And of course, uh, the bigger you get, the bigger a target you become. Do How do you avoid being accused of, you're the one who's biased here and you're the one who's tilting, uh, tilting the news? Yeah, well, you know, we are building, we have been trying to build a skyscraper on really shaky ground, right, Fred? So we are uh, fully aware of the kind of distrustful, lopsided kind of environment, uh, information environment, the political environment, on top of which we're trying to build a trusted brand for information. So all we can do is kind of do the things that we can control. So number one, uh, the design of these fact briefs is designed to keep the answers short and non-controversial. You can't give lengthy explanation. It's 150 word fact briefs that answer yes, no to kind of key factual questions. You can't engage in big kind of polemics, right, uh, on GigaFact. So that's number one. Number two, the criteria by which we admit newsrooms into the network. Number three, the amount of self-policing uh, we do and make transparent in terms of our own internal processes and editorial policies and codes of ethics. Number four is 
who, who and where we take funding from and, and disclosing that in really public ways. And number five, we subject ourselves to, to uh, you know, facts are equally inconvenient to everybody. And we hope that, that, that uh, the body of work, you know, uh, starts being used by people on the right, people on the left, people uh, in the in the middle, because because uh, we care about getting uh, really good facts out there. We're not trying to control what guns these bullets are loaded in, and we are trying to kind of build a build a brand for factual information uh, reporting via this great network of newsrooms that joined the project and and trust that this kind of approach. Um, you know, maximizes uh, maximize the opportunity to build that trust. But but we're not, you know, we're not uh, we're not complacent about it by any means. And I'm and I'm waiting for the day that we start getting targeted, which means we're starting to be successful, right? And I um, and uh, but I think that's how we look at it, and we kind of are keeping our heads down and building this in an incredibly open and transparent way. Now, are you designed uh, as well for public consumption besides uh, for the newsrooms? Um, so I, we have two sides to our platform. The newsroom side of the platform is signing up these newsrooms, teaching them, training them. We give them small grants. We give them software tools and we get them to start publishing these fact briefs. And, um, uh, and we are, and our hope is we will have a thousand newsrooms in three years who are all signed up to do this gigafact fact brief work. On the other side, we are getting these fact briefs out into circulation. So when you do uh, a, uh, and, and we have both a tech oriented approach, which again, where we're working directly with Google, for instance, on a project that they call the claim review project that allows facts and fact checks to surface high on search results. Uh, uh, but as well in an AP style model where we're syndicating this content out to other platforms that want to carry this content free of charge this year uh, so that we can get these facts into circulation. So we maximize the opportunity for consumers to encounter it. They might encounter it on social media. They might encounter it because it was shared by GigaFact. They might encounter it on a Google search. They may encounter it uh, because one of our distribution or republishing partners have it on their website and they've got a couple of million viewers uh, per month coming to their website. So our goal is to get these, these building blocks, factual building blocks out into circulation as wide as possible uh, so that consumers have a, the best chance of encountering it in their moment of need. Um, and uh, our hope eventually is to go directly to the social platforms um, and do uh, arrangements with them where when they encounter cl uh, claims that are circulating, they use a gigafact originated fact post to, to slow down the spread of those claims using into, into their, in, through, via their internal moderation processes. So, so we're trying to make these facts visible and available to consumers, and that's the goal. So we're organizing the supply chain on one side with these great, this great network of, of uh, newsrooms, and on the other side, really the amplification model. Well, clearly you're not afraid of tackling what's tough. The site again is gigafact.org. Chandran, Shankaran, thank you so much for your efforts and for spending time with us. Fred, thank you. And thank you for having me on in this conversation.